everyone, I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Duane, and this week we're asking what's the big idea when it comes to building smart and sustainable cities in the Middle East? We'll take a look at the latest technological mega trends aimed at making the lives of city dwellers more efficient, more affordable, and healthier. Later in the show, we'll travel to the foothills of Mount Lebanon to meet an eminent architect who counts Abu Dhabi's iconic and sustainable pearl building amongst his many monuments. You want to do something for, good for society, at the same time you want to do something to get the project working. And we're on the ground in Kuwait, where the country's first smart and green city will be built. But first, Salim Saeed has the lowdown on the Arab Future City Summit taking place in the UAE, and news of which emirate has topped the smart list for the MENA region. Helping find smart solutions in modern societies is exactly what the Air Future City Summit is all about. And increasingly, analysts believe it's not all about implementing new technologies. It all begins with people. Today, more than half the world's population lives in cities. And that's expected to increase to almost two-thirds by 2050, according to McKinsey. With the population rising, so too is demand for food and clean water, public and private transport and healthcare, all of which affects people's quality of life. That's where smart cities come in. In the same way that smartphones have made people's lives easier, so can more efficient digital systems for public use. This year's McKinsey Smart Cities Report, which ranked 50 countries in terms of their level of advanced technology, placed Abu Dhabi as number one in the Middle East and North Africa region. We are working hard to sustain our positions in, the, in leading uh, the, the, the region, uh, but our re the, the, the target is, 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 uh, is not the region. The target is the whole international community of the whole world. Dubai ranks as the second smartest city in the region. And ahead of Expo 2020, the Emirate is working to a smart city initiative that will harness the internet of everything. At a federal level, the UAE has invested heavily in an M government program since 2001, with the aim of making government services available to all residents at all times. Every dirham that we spend it on government shared services, uh, the government is saving five dirham uh, on the other hand. So those are all proof that spending on technology has a huge return of investment. The UAE, Jordan and Saudi Arabia are among the highest ranked Middle Eastern countries in terms of digital capability, according to the 2018 IMD World Digital Competitiveness Report. And Saudi's NEOM project is one of the region's most ambitious smart city developments announced to date with a 10,000 square mile economic zone in Metropolis in the planning, which will connect to Egypt and Jordan. The mega city will run on 100% renewable energy and be funded with $500 billion of government money. And they expect a return on their GDP by 2030 of 100 billion. So I don't think there is anything of its kind in the region or worldwide. And if the Saudi project proves successful, some analysts say that the development could prove a template for other countries to build something similar. Whilst building towers of record-breaking height was once a priority for many modern Middle Eastern countries, today affordable and efficient developments are on the rise. A man who's had a hand in urban planning in the region and created some of the most sculptural and eco-friendly buildings is Marwan Zugeb, and he invited Inspire Middle East into his home. Having grown up with a keen eye for detail and a passion for boundary-pushing design, Lebanese-born Marwan realized his dream of becoming an architect. He rose to notoriety in 2002 when he founded his own firm and rode the wave of a regional construction boom that saw his sculptural high-rise towers and bespoke luxury houses spring up across Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, the UAE and Nigeria. His signature style involves geometric structures and conceptual living spaces, like the Meditation House in Lebanon, which is embedded into a mountainside and plays with natural light and the spherical, environmentally friendly headquarters of the real estate company Aldar in Abu Dhabi. Upcoming projects include the award-winning Ring House in Saudi, a sustainable rectangular building cocooned within a cylindrical structure. For Inspire, Marwan opened up his summer residence in Harajal, Mount Lebanon. Away from the hustle and bustle of Beirut, it's a house that reflects his design aesthetic of bringing the outdoors indoors. Marwan, a very warm welcome to Inspire Middle East. Pleasure to have you here, Rebecca, in my home. 
Let me start by asking you about the massive transformation that the urban landscape has seen in the Middle East in the last two decades. Yeah. What has characterized it? Has it been a good or a bad thing? In fact, it's both of them. The last 20 years, I've realized two different phenomena. The first one, most of the historical cities in the Middle East has lost its identity. And this was due to the different wars, due to the reconstruction, as reconstruction can be as harmful as war itself. And the other phenomenon is that we realized we saw the rise of new cities, especially in the Gulf area. Those cities have also a problem of identity. And I don't think it's a problem of the Gulf or the Arab world only. I think now it's a common problem all over the world. I think there is a crisis in the architectural language. Everything looks the same everywhere. Well, if there is that crisis that you speak of, what's your responsibility as an architect? Is it to design show-stopping or functional buildings, for example? The problem is that we share responsibility with the client. And everybody knows about this obsession of the highest, uh, longest, you know, biggest. You want to do something for, good for society. At the same time, you want to do something to get the project working. You cannot succeed it most of the time, unfortunately. And I don't think this is a problem that's happening only in the Middle East. It's now everywhere, in China, in Africa, even in conservative cities such as London. Well, of those high-rise buildings uh, in all of the cities that you speak of, aren't people tiring of them? Is this the only functional living space that architects can come up with? Are we looking to something different in the future? Unfortunately, there is no solution, you know, with the, the, the population increasing everywhere. But the problem is that while designing those cities, we're not giving spaces like green spaces or parks or, you know, city has to be walkable. The Aldar building in Abu Dhabi, uh, many believe that it's a pearl resting on the shore. Is that the case? And what were the biggest challenges with designing a round building? <laughs> If you want to see it as a pearl, you can see it as a pearl, inspired from nature. I think the main challenging thing for me was the contact of that circle with the land. We had to go back to the one of the oldest theory in architecture. And in every sketch that we did, we realized that the circle is integrated in a pentagram. And this is, you know, a representation of the human being, the human body, the microcosm. Marwan, what's the big dream? What project or brief has evaded you to date? So what do you want to build? That's an interesting question. In fact, what I would like to do now, I'd like to do small projects, to be honest. More in relation with nature, more in relation with society. Uh, I'd like to do some projects in Africa. And I would like to participate in the reconstruction of Aleppo, Halab, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. It's in Syria and it's entirely destroyed now. This would be my dream. We hope your dreams come true. Marwan, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much for your time today. Pleasure is mine. Thank you. It's estimated that the smart city global market could be worth as much as $2.6 trillion by 2025. And many countries in the Middle East have ambitious plans to develop connected, competitive and convenient cities. One such multi-billion dollar development is planned for Kuwait. And Damon Embling went along to see if cities of its kind could be the solution to the Arab state's urban problems. Kuwait is a country that's looking to the future. It's got a 30-year vision to transform itself into a hub for trade, finance and tourism, cutting its dependency on oil revenues. And at the heart of that vision, tech-rich smart cities, with the first due to go up on a stretch of desert just outside the capital. Salsad Al Abdullah's build as the first city in the Middle East to be both green and smart. Work on the $4 billion developments expected to start late next year. Q8 is partnering up with South Korea, a leader in the smart field, to make it happen. Once finished, the 64 square kilometer city will be home to around 400,000 people. We're thinking about uh, using a lot of uh, ideas, uh, for example, smart mobility, in which to use the latest technologies uh, to control the tra traffic management, also to monitor the infrastructure. While South Saad is still a few years off, smart technologies are already being built into other new housing developments, like South Al Mutla, close to the capital. The foundations are just being laid for what is Kuwait's largest housing project so far, with more than 28,000 homes being created. 
For architecture companies in Kuwait, the ever-changing needs of the population are disrupting traditional design thinking. We've been doing business in Kuwait for over 50 years now and um, the way that uh, we design and the way that our projects are configured is totally different. That's important for Kuwait, it's important for, this, for the future because of the population growth, because of the demands on the economy, for the demands of the environment. But it's not just new buildings being earmarked for the smart treatment. Here at Kuwait's oldest souk, a university researcher, has come up with a high-tech vision to take it into the future. There is a huge potential in here, starting from a parking, where we, where we will have a sensors in all over park, in all over parking for Barkia. Parking is an issue here. Uh, plus, we could have it to manage the souk, starting from cleaning, water management, and supervisors distribution. The pressure's on for Kuwait to turn all these smart ideas into reality, flipping urban planning on its head and fertilizing a fresh breed of cities fit for the future. Well, that's a wrap for this week. Before I leave you, here are some impressive cityscapes uploaded by fans of architecture in the region. Bahrain resident Mirza posted this video saying that for her, the building beautifully balanced modernity and sustainability. Photographer Ahmed shared this time-lapse video of Kuwait City's skyline from its business district. And Anna from Poland braved the summer heat to take in the futuristic architecture of Mazdar City in Abu Dhabi, dubbing it a magic place.